Now, keep in mind some valuable information here. Don't be lazy. Don't skip steps. Your clients will thank you. Your boss will thank you. Your website will thank you if you can get higher listings in search engines. So if you take your time to do diligence with this and take it one step at a time, everybody will thank you, hopefully. Yes, maybe even I'll thank you. All right, so here's what we need to do next. Here's what I want to share with you. I'm going to go to the front end of my site. Now, to save a little bit of time here, I'm going to share with you a little technique. I'm going to copy this, make a new tab, Command-T, Macintosh, Control-T for Windows. And that's going to be my front end. I'm just going to take this when we go into our uh, ultimatum theme builder experience. Uh, I'm going to keep this tab up here. So here's our back end. Here's our front end. Here's our back end. Here's our front end. Okay, now, you'll notice that I have different... Uh, information on my left and again you're, again you're looking at the 2015 basic generic theme that ships with WordPress as of 2015. If you scroll down here you'll notice I have something called category but category is uncategorized. Well that's not good for search engine uncategorized that's like making a web page for those of you that use Dreamweaver or Notepad or do web development outside of WordPress that's kind of like making an untitled page. Not an untitled file, the name of the file has to be there, but the title of the page is what shows up in search engines. So this is really a bad idea to have something called uncategorized. So what we're gonna do based on these choices, categories are part of posts. There's posts and there's pages. Posts are basically things that you'd post on a regular basis where pages are not, you're not gonna add many, many pages. Once your site is set with 10, 12, 15, 30 different types of pages, an about us page, a product page, a shipping page, a customer service page, those are pretty much going to be in place for most of the life of your site if you think about that. But posts can be a thought, a new product, a release, a press release could be under post. We'll talk more about that as we progress with the course. So based on these choices, I want to go under post and based on these choices, I want to go to categories. And you'll see by default, I have uncategorized. Now notice that I can't delete this. You can't delete your basic category. You have to have at least one category. But here's what I can do. I can go to quick edit. Now part of the reason I go to quick edit, because there's certain things you can do in quick edit that you can't do elsewhere. So as an example, let me cancel that for a second. Let's go into edit. In edit, you'll get this full screen. You can do a little bit more things with edit. One of the cool things you can do with edit by hitting the edit menu is you can write a description. Now for search engine optimization, I highly suggest that you put, you'll hear me say this a lot during the course, word sell at your words, put it different words as an example. Let's say that you're looking for a WordPress training course. Now, some people might look for WordPress training, others might look for WordPress tutorials, WordPress learning, WordPress school, WordPress tips. So what you can do is put that word salad of different words down here in your description for your particular category. In this particular case, we're gonna write down uh, WP WordPress training. Now, this is what the viewer is going to see. What the search engine is going to see is down here. Now, typically you have to separate this with a hyphen, but WordPress will do this for you. So let me share with you. I'm going to just copy this, paste this down here, and then I'm going to say like WordPress training tutorials, learning how to spell sometimes would help, lessons, uh, let's see, school, Spelling school sometimes helps. Uh, tips, techniques. Now again, these are ways that people might look for something. So don't assume that everybody's gonna look for the same thing. Parent, we'll talk about that in a later sub, subcategory, but this is basically, you can have different hierarchy menus. You can have a main menu and then a sub menu. I'm gonna update that. Now, here's the cool part. I said a second ago that your slug, the information that comes up in search engine, needs to be separated with hyphens. But you didn't have to type in the hyphen. In fact, you'll see that here's the slug right here. If I go back to edit again for a second, you will see that it automatically put in the hyphens and it made it lowercase. Lowercase, no space. You have to put in hyphens. I'm just going to hit update again and share with you that you didn't have to put in the hyphens. Now, if you want to have other categories, we can go and add other categories from here. So let's say I have WordPress training. So let's do WordPress training. 
let's do W two training uh, desktop. And we're just going to copy and paste this down here. Now, again, you would put more descriptive information here in the slug, but I'm just saving a little bit of time. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I want to make WordPress training for desktop a parent. I want to make the parent training. So watch how that works. You put it in the description information if you want to as well and add category. Now, this little uh, M space dash tells you that this is a subcategory of WordPress training. Now, to keep consistency here, I'm going to hit the edit menu, and I'm just going to make that a capital T and a capital D. That's just a little aesthetic thing. But notice that the, the search engine friendly is lowercase with hyphens. So let's do one more. WP Mobile. So WP mobile training, or actually let's do trading mobile to keep consistent what we just did a second ago. And I'm going to copy and paste that. And again, we'll make this a, the parent be WordPress. Now I can have a subcategory of a subcategory of a subcategory. We're just going to keep this simple just to share with you how that works and hit add new category. Okay, now if I go back to my front end again, here's the front end, here's the back end. Okay, this we're done with, so we can actually close that out. And I refresh, you'll see that this is now categorized. Now, part of the reason that you're not seeing the subcategories is because I don't have any information for that subcategory. So as an example, if I was to come back here, and this is my default category. Remember that was called uncategorized, so it's automatically attached to post and pages. Or in this particular case, I should say post because pages don't have a category. So let me just share with you something. If I go to add new post, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trash this anyway, but I just wanna share with you how this works. So I'm gonna say uh, my new post. Then, where do you wanna put it? Well, we're going to take my new post and we're going to make that part of our desktop category. Now, if you want to make it part of WordPress training as well, you could do that because that's going to help you with search engines. So it's still technically part of WordPress training. So I'm going to select these two and come up here and pick publish. Now, part of getting to know WordPress the right way is I don't have to go to view post since I already have a front end. I can just hit the refresh key. And you will see that I now have a subcategory for WordPress desktop. And if I click there, that's going to bring up my new post under the category of WordPress training. Now, let me show you an alternative to that. Let's say that I didn't have this window up here for a second, but I don't want to keep going to the front and coming to the back and going to the front and coming to the back and drive myself insane. So one of the things that WordPress enables you to do is something called preview changes. So if I click preview changes, this is going to leave this window alone. Watch what happens. And it's going to open up a brand new window. So the advantage of that particular technique, which we're going to use from now on, is I don't have to basically create a new page. I can just go to that page. When I'm done with the page, I can just close the window because it's going to keep my back in admin. Let me explain that again. Rather than hit view post, if I'm in my back in admin and I hit view post, it's going to replace this with my new post. Then I have to hit the back button. Okay. Now, if you don't want to do that, simply hit preview changes. That's going to pop up a new window. So if you're done looking at this or testing this, you can simply close the window. Okay, so those are some basic housekeeping techniques for working with WordPress. Now, since the objective of this particular course is to teach you my favorite framework, which is the ultimatum theme frame, and now that we have some basic WordPress essentials out of the way, everything is based on WordPress, by the way, ultimatum is simply a theme. So in our next video, I will share with you how to install the ultimatum theme from scratch. So stay tuned.